Hi, Dr. Romano. It's awful hot out here today. Are you doing another, uh, what are you doing? I'd like to go over with you something called gymnosperms. Now, everyone knows angiosperms are the fruits and flowers. But how about the non-flowering plants? Let's do an example. Now, conifers are examples of gymnosperms. Gymnosperms are what we call naked seeds. In other words, seeds are not enclosed in an ovary, which, as you know, is a fruit. Cones are made by these conifers. Now, when I say to you a pine tree has cones, I don't want you to think that that's the only thing that has cones. Pine trees, spruce tree, hemlock, larch, cedar, all these contain or will form cones. Now, a good example of a cone would be um, it's an organ that contains the reproductive structure of the tree, and that's what you know as a cone. Cones are mo mainly monoecious. That's a dangerous word. We want to make sure we know that for the dat. Dioecious as well as monoecious. Dioecious, we all know, means it's distinctively male, distinctively female. But if you looked on a tree, you would see that you would have both male and female cones on a tree. So therefore, we would call that monoecious. The pine cone that usually you would see on the ground or if you looked up are the females. The females are much larger. Now remember, the main function is to keep the seed safe. So pine cones open up when warm to release their seeds. And if you looked at a pine cone up close, they have scales to protect the seeds from things like cold and wind and animals. The male pine cone is very small, soft, and found in the lower branches. You might not even notice them. They're not very distinctive. The female is the one that we think of at Christmas time or at holidays for de decorations. You see them on the ground. They receive the pollen from the male, and it contains the seeds. And the seeds go on to become young pine trees. Pine cones are very sticky if you touch them because of the resin. And they contain what we call terpenes. And I drew a terpene here for you. If you remember from organic chemistry, the terpene contains this unit. I call it a fish hook to my organic students. It's called an isoprene unit. And as you can see from here, um, I'll put it in red. This is the isoprene unit. You got one, two, you got this five carbon unit. You got one here. Make sure when you do this, the reds aren't touching each other. So you can see there's two distinct isoprene units, and these are in the terpenes. That's another question you want to remember for the DAT or the old exam is to recognize a terpene. Um, as you can see here, there's two chiral carbons. This would be a dangerous question that we don't need to get into, but if I ever said how many stereoisomers, because there's two chiral carbons, you would think four. But because of this bridge, it puts a geometric constraint on it, and there would only be two. Um, in other words, you could think of this bridge going above the plane, or the enantomer will be going below the plane. So in actuality, there would only be two. And these terpenes are found um, in great abundance in these conifers. I hope that gives you a good idea, um, other than you're used to seeing angiosperms, which are the flowering plants. This gives you a good idea to see a class of plants called the gymnosperms. All right, I'll see you I again. see some pine cones around you there, Dr. Romano. There's one back there. Well, good for you. You can go hunting for some pine cones. And remember, if you see a pine cone, it's likely going to be a female. Good day to you. Good day, Dr. Romano.